liabilities are formed when a company buys goods and services on credit or receives short-term loans. A current liability is an amount owed that is expected to be paid within one year of the balance sheet date or during the operating cycle, whichever is longer. Examples of current liabilities typically include accounts payable, short-term notes, wages payable, taxes payable, and unearned revenue. The most common type of current liability is accounts payable. Accounts payable are recorded when a business purchases goods or services from a vendor or a supplier on credit. For example, an invoice from a supplier that is due within 30 days is just like a 30-day interest-free loan from the supplier, and therefore it's considered an account payable, which is a current liability. Suppose that J Company purchases supplies on credit from Green Company on July 15th. Green Company invoices J Company for $700, and the payment is due on August 15th, which is 30 days later. The $700 becomes an account payable on J Company's balance sheet on July 15th. Because this account payable amount is due within 30 days, it is reported as a current liability on the balance sheet. The journal entry to set up the current liability would be a credit to accounts payable and a debit to supplies. Sometimes vendors offer discounts for early payment. For example, Green Company could offer J Company a 2% sales discount if payment is received within 10 days. This arrangement would be defined as 210 net 30. If J Company takes advantage of this discount by making an early payment, the journal entries would include a credit to cash of only $686, $700 net of a 2% discount. The remaining credit would be to a discount account, which is effectively an income statement gain account. Some long-term debts, such as mortgages and notes payable, may be payable in a series of monthly or quarterly installments depending on the terms of the credit agreement. With these long-term debts, there is often a portion of the principal that is due within one year. That portion due within one year is considered a current liability. Therefore, the current portion of long-term debt is that portion of long-term debt due within one year of the balance sheet date, and it is reported under current liabilities on the balance sheet. The remainder of the obligation or debt continues to be classified as a long-term liability. This distinction tells whoever reviews the company's financial statements what amount is due in the short term and what amount is due in the long term. For example, J Company borrows $400,000 from State Bank in January 2017. Suppose that 50% of the principal is to be repaid on December 1, 2019. The balance of $200,000 is due on December 1, 2020. J Company closes its operating cycle on December 31st. In order to record accurate information on current liabilities as of December 31st, 2018, J Company must reclassify 50% of this long-term debt as a current liability because that portion of debt is now due within a year of the balance sheet date. A note payable is a form of borrowed funds or loan from a financial institution, such as a bank. It is a source of financing with an obligation to pay back the amount borrowed at a future date. For the use of the borrowed funds, the bank will charge interest, which is an interest expense to the borrower. A note payable states the amount borrowed, the due date for repayment, and the interest rate associated with the amount borrowed. The note could be long-term or short-term, depending on when the principal must be paid back. Suppose that J Company borrows $10,000 from State Bank on June 1st for six months at an annual interest rate of 5%. This is a short-term note payable because it is only a six-month loan. According to the terms of the note payable, J Company will pay back the principal plus interest at the end of the six months. This is a very important fact because each month, J Company must calculate the accrued interest and capitalize it, which means add it to the principal of the loan. 
At the end of the six month period, a lump sum payment including principal and interest will then extinguish the note. At the end of each month, J Company will recognize interest based on the number of days in that month. The entries necessary to recognize the accrual of interest include a debit to interest expense and a credit to interest payable. On November 30th, the company will recognize the final month of accrued interest and then make a total payment of $10,250.71 to pay off the note.